So the next item on the agenda is the status of the designated officer program for 2015 as outlined CMD 16 M24 and M24B. And uh, Monsieur LeBlanc will make the presentation. Put you in an unusual position. Yeah, oui, c'est un peu étrange. <laughs> Mais bonjour, Monsieur le Président et les membres de la Commission. Pour le verbatim, mon nom est Marc Leblanc, secrétaire de la Commission. Je suis accompagné aujourd'hui de Sophie Gingras, qui est l'agente technique principale de la Commission, ainsi que Monica Ornoff, qui est l'agente de soutien technique de la Commission. We are here today to present CMD 16M24 on the status of the designated officer program for the 2015 calendar year. This presentation is for information only and no action is requested from the Commission or of the Commission. Joining us today are also several designated officers who are available to answer any questions you may have about their activities. I will now pass the presentation to Sophie Gingras. Bonjour, Monsieur le Président et membres de la Commission. Mon nom is Sophie Gingras. In this presentation, we will provide you with a brief background on the designated officer program, information about the licensing and certification authorities that were carried out by designated officers, information about non-licensing authorities that were carried out by designated officers, information about designated officer training, and improvements that have been made to the designated officer program. Designated officers have a requirement to report to the Commission on decisions that are made pursuant to subsection 375 of the Nuclear Safety and Control Act. This report is intended to, to consolidate this reporting requirement for the 2015 calendar year. Information about these decisions is provided further in the presentation. I will now pass the presentation to Monica Hornoff. Merci, Madame Jankra. Good afternoon, Mr. President and members of the Commission. First, I would like to note a few corrections to CMD 16M24. On page 5 of the CMD, the third bullet, the sentence reads 1,853 under paragraph 372D, license renewals, amendments, revocations, with 4,201 authorities carried out. The number 4,201 is incorrect and should in fact read 1,848. On page 9, section 3.2 of the CMD, CNSC staff reports that the Technical Support Branch carried out two non-licensing authorities. This is incorrect. In fact, six non-licensing authorities were carried out by designated officers in this branch. These additional four authorities carried out by this branch will be reflected in the totals that are reported throughout this presentation. Finally, on page 12 of the CMD, the first order reported for December 15, 2014 should be listed as closed on January 16, 2015, not 2016. I will now provide a little background information on the role that designated officers have played within the CNSC. Designated officers have been a key element of the CNSC since the coming into force of the Nuclear Safety and Control Act in the year 2000. Under subsection 37.2 and paragraph 65.01b of the Act, the Commission can authorize a person as a designated officer who can carry out specific authorities on behalf of the Commission. These include, but are not limited to, licensing, certification, and compliance authorities. To assist designated officers in carrying out their authorities, the CNSC established a designated officer program. This internal CNSC program includes training information, work instructions, and other tools to ensure that designated officers have the support required to carry out their authorities effectively. Designated officers carry out more than 95% of CNSC licensing decisions. 
These decisions generally include lower risk licensing of nuclear substances and radiation devices, import and export licenses, and licenses for less complex facilities. Decisions that would generate public interest, including the licensing of complex facilities, such as nuclear power plants, remain with the Commission. We will now provide you with information on the Designated Officer Program. Designated officers have been carrying out their authorities since the year 2000, and these authorities were originally given to 47 CNSC staff positions. Positions with designated officer authorities are found in two CNSC branches, the Regulatory Operations Branch and the Technical Support Branch. In 2014, CNSC staff conducted a review of the designated officer program and the positions with designated officer authorities that existed at that time. It was found that out of 47 positions, only 31 were required based on the volume of designated officer of activities. On this basis, CNSC staff proposed a reduction of positions with designated officer authorities to better reflect the CNSC's operational needs. The Commission approved these 31 revised designated officer positions at a May 2014 public commission meeting. A master list of these positions was developed. At that time, the Commission secretary was identified as the process owner. The revised program also included a reporting component to the Commission, as well as new documentation. Under the Nuclear Safety and Control Act, only specific, not all decisions made by designated officers must be reported to the Commission. These are provided for under section, subsection 37.5 of the Nuclear Safety and Control Act. An annual reporting component was added to the designated officer program during its revision in 2014. The reporting requirement had two components. The first was to fulfill the designated officer requirement regarding specific decisions that were reportable to the Commission. The second was to provide the Commission with additional information about the designated officer program. This included information about additional authorities carried out and changes that were made to the program. This is the first annual reporting activity conducted in this regard. Information provided by designated officers included details about the authorities that they carried out during 2015, the challenges that they faced in carrying out these authorities, information about the training provided to them, and proposed program improvements. As this is a first annual report, it is intended as a baseline for future reporting activities. The following slides will provide you with information regarding designated officer licensing and certification authorities that were carried out. The Nuclear Safety and Control Act provides for four licensing and certification authorities. The certifi these include the certification and decertification of prescribed equipment, the certification and decertification of persons, the issuance of a license of a class established by the Commission, and the renewal, suspension in whole or in part, amendment, revocation, replacement, or authorization of a transfer of a license of a class issued by the Commission. During 2015, designated officers in the Regulatory Operations Branch and the Technical Support Branch carried out 3,800 licensing and certification authorities. The next several slides will provide more detailed information on these authorities carried out, broken down by CNSC Branch. Within the Regulatory Operations Branch, designated officers carried out 2,187 licensing and certification authorities. The majority of these were licensing authorities carried out by designated officers in the Directorate of Nuclear Substance Regulation. 221 licenses were issued during 2015 by three divisions in the Directorate of Nuclear Substance Regulation. These three divisions also carried out 1,848 license renewals, amendments, or revocations. The Nuclear Substance and Radiation Devices Licensing Division carried out the majority of these authorities. This volume of licensing activities is comparable to that from previous years. 
In addition to the authorities carried out by the Directorate of Nuclear Substance Regulation, the Directorate of Nuclear Cycle and Facilities Regulation carried out five licensing authorities. Three divisions in the Directorate of Nuclear Substance Regulation carried out 113 certification-related authorities in 2015. These included 92 certifications and decertifications of prescribed equipment and 21 certifications and decertifications of persons. We will now look at the authorities carried out by designated officers in the technical support branch. During 2015, Designated officers in the technical support branch carried out 1,613 licensing and certification authorities. The majority of the authorities carried out were related to export and import licensing by designated officers in the Directorate of Security and Safeguards. This directorate also carried out 103 licensing amendments and renewals. The Directorate of Safety Management carried out 494 certifications and decertifications of persons, such as certified exposure device operators and reactor operators. We will now present the non-licensing authorities that were carried out. Non-licensing authorities encompass all authorities that are not related to licensing and certification. These include inspector designations, Compliance authorities, such, such as the issuance of orders and administrative monetary penalties, and return to work authorizations of persons whose dose of radiation has or may have exceeded the prescribed radiation dose limits. During 2015, designated officers in both branches carried out a total of 40 non-licensing authorities. The majority of non-licensing authorities were carried out by designated officers in the regulatory operations branch. During 2015, designated officers in the Directorate of Nuclear Substance Regulation, the Directorate of Nuclear Cycle and Facilities Regulation, and the Directorate of Power Reactor Regulation carried out 34 authorities, including nine inspector designations, the issuance of three designated officer orders, the review of 16 inspector orders, the issuance of six notices of violation. In the technical support branch, the Director General of the Directorate of Environmental and Radiation Protection and Assessment carried out four inspector designation authorities. Two return to work authorizations were carried out by the same directorate. We will now present additional information on some of the compliance related decisions that were made by designated officers. Designated officers have the authority to issue the same orders as inspectors. Pursuant to subsection 37.6 of the Nuclear Safety and Control Act, all orders issued by designated officers shall be referred to the Commission. Since these orders were referred to the Commission after they were issued, the reporting on these orders is provided for the Commission's information. Three orders were issued by designated officers to three licensees during 2015. A designated officer order was issued to a licensee on June 3, 2015 in regard to the release of non-radioactive wastewater at a remediation site. The Commission confirmed this order on June 30, 2015. The licensee has since complied with the order. A designated officer order was issued to a licensee on August 24, 2015 in regard to the failure to comply with a license condition. In this matter, the Commission confirmed three conditions of the order and amended three conditions of the order. A third designated officer order was issued to a licensee on November 30, 2015 in regard to an unauthorized transfer of a radiation device and the order was referred to the Commission on the same date. The licensee has since complied with the order. These matters are now all closed. The Nuclear Safety and Control Act also provides for the designated officer authority to issue notices of violation and the related administrative monetary penalties. During 2015, six notices of violation were issued by the Director General of Nuclear Substance 
by the Director General of the Directorate of Nuclear Substance Regulation. The violations included non-compliances with license conditions, improper transfer of radiation devices, and the unauthorized handling of sources. All persons served with a notice of violation were advised of the opportunity to request a review by the Commission to review the amount of the penalty, the facts of the violation, or both. No requests for review were made in relation to these matters. All of the administrative monetary penalties were paid in full and these matters are now closed. To date, in 2016, four administrative monetary penalties were issued, with one of these matters currently under review. We will now present information about decisions made by designated officers that are reportable to the Commission pursuant to subsection 37.5 of the Act. The reporting of these decisions is the only statutory reporting requirement and includes decisions on license refusals, the issuance of licenses with a financial guarantee, the renewal of a license with a change in conditions, or the suspension, amendment, revocation, or replacement of a license without the consent of a licensee, and the confirmation, amendment, revocation, or replacement of an inspector order. During 2015, designated officers carried out a total of 3,840 authorities. However, only 1,827 of these were reportable to the Commission under subsection 37.5 of the Act. In January 2015, the Commission, on its own motion, decided to include in all nuclear substance, prescribed equipment, and Class II nuclear facility licenses a condition for financial guarantees. As a result, reportable decisions in 2015 included the issuance of 1,809 licenses with a financial guarantee condition. These decisions were carried out primarily by the Nuclear Substance and Radiation Devices Licensing Division and the Accelerators and Class II Facilities Division, both in the Directorate of Nuclear Substance Regulation. Designa designated officers also made 16 decisions regarding inspector orders. These decisions were carried out by designated officers in several directorates. These matters have now been closed. In the Directorate of Security and Safeguards, a designated officer made two license refusal decisions during 2015. The applicant in these matters did not submit any subsequent requests for review. Through the presentation of this information, designated officers aim to fulfill the require reporting requirements to the Commission pursuant to subsection 37.5 of the Nuclear Safety and Control Act for 2015. We will now provide information about designated officer training. The training program for designated officers includes activities to assist them in carrying out their authorities. These include a briefing with the Commission Secretary and Senior General Counsel, self-directed learning of program documentation, on-the-job peer consultation, and on-the-job designated officer coaching on operational matters. The briefings with the Secretary and Senior General Counsel are intended for new designated officers. However, a designated officer can request a refresher at any time. Designated officers provided feedback regarding the training that they had received for the purpose of carrying out their authorities. In general, designated officers were satisfied with the information that was provided to them as part of their training. The feedback did note that additional tools such as work instructions and guidance documents would help designated officers in carrying out their authorities. Designated officers also noted that mechanisms that encourage the sharing of experiences in a more systematic way would be useful to them. Based on these suggestions, several improvements are being implemented in the designated officer program. <coughs> Recently, a bulletin board and a designated officer community page were set up on the CNSC's intranet to assist designated officers in networking and sharing their experiences with each other. The bulletin board will also help notify designated officers of changes to the program to help them in carrying out their authorities. 
Lunch and Learn sessions were held in May 2016 and additional sessions are planned. Additional, additionally, new tools for designated officers such as improved work instructions and for the issuance of orders have been developed. Training sessions are going to be held in July and September 2016 for designated officers and their support staff. I will now pass the presentation back to Sophie Gengra. In conclusion, during the 2015 calendar year, designated officers carried out a total of 3,840 authorities. Of these authorities, 1,827 decisions were reportable to the Commission. This reporting of these decisions to the Commission aims to fulfill the designated officer reporting requirement pursuant to subsection 2D75 of the Nuclear Safety and Control Act. During 2015, designated officers also referred three matters to the Commission and issued six administrative money penalties. These matters are all now closed. The information provided today is baseline information for future reporting to the Commission on the status of the designated officer program. CNDC staff intends to report to the Commission annually on the authorities that designated officers carry out during the calendar year. Designated officer decisions that are reportable to the Commission and changes and improvements that were made to the designated officer program over the course of the year. Continuous improvement is key to having an effective and successful designated officer program. Through lessons learned and the consideration of designated officer experiences, these improvements will continue to be brought to the program. The next status of the designated officer program report will provide the Commission with information about designated officer activities and program updates from the 2015 calen 2016 calendar year. I will now pass the presentation to Marc Leblanc. Merci. Uh, this concludes our presentation. As this was the initial report, your feedback on what is useful from this report, what can be improved, what you'd be looking for, would be appreciated. So we are now available to answer any question that a commission may have. Thank you. Thank you.